Hey, I'm Pat, and in this video, I will be going over some simple projects for you to do as a beginner scripter. Uh, realistically, these projects have been made with the idea that uh, everything you can pretty much make everything as long as you've watched like all my videos from my uh, how to script series or whatever, right? And I'm also going to be giving you the uh, uh, files for these games, obviously. Uh, I don't expect you to like perfectly recreate them or anything like obviously you don't have to be perfect at GUI or anything any of that you can just make a pretty simple GUI and just code all the back end everything like that it doesn't have to be perfect and I don't really expect you to like uh, immediately download the file and use it I expect you to like try and make it on your own if you get stuck or you want to see how I did things uh, you can download it and I have pretty much commented every line of code, so you know what every line of code does. Not on this admin panel, because this is actually like an old script that I brought back. Uh, this isn't my first admin panel. Uh, this is actually my second one. I've made this one, which is the first one I ever made, but I actually lost the code for it. This is going to be the one that I used for this video. But I lost the code for it, so I ended up just using my other one. I also have a third one that I might show if I have time, but pretty much uh, just basic admin panel, maybe like this. In this area would maybe be like a list of the players in the server, and then you can click on them. Here you could type in like a reason for why you kick or ban them. Uh, you can toggle the server to lock it. That would pretty much kick anybody that joins the server. So only the people on the server can be inside. And then you can either kick, ban, or you can server ban them. And then there's also an unban option to unban players, right? And uh, let me make a script real quick. So just something to keep in mind for this because I haven't gone over it actually. So I'm just going to use type checking real quick. Don't worry about this. And what we can do with a player, so imagine this variable is actually a player, right? What we can do is, um, wait. Uh, game players, that player added, wait. What we can do with the player is we can actually use kick. And what this will do is pretty much disconnect the player from the server. And we can do this on the server and the client, but if you're doing it on the client, you can only do it on the client. Like, So you can only do it on the local player if you're using kick on the client. And you can also pass a message or like a reason. Uh, so you can do kick and you can be like, you suck. And it'd say, you've been kicked because you suck. Uh, there's no ban method. You'd have to use a data store for something like that. And then you just check when they join the game if they're banned and if they are you just kick them all right so that's how that'd work just a simple gui like this uh you don't have to make it like perfect or pretty this was like the first admin panel i ever made admin panels are really good this is literally how i actually started getting into being pretty good at scripting is by making admin panels because they teach you how to do back-end scripts they teach you how to organize stuff uh they teach you how to do ui and visuals they're just really good all around things to do and they're not like a full scale game project. The other two are going to be games kind of. So the next one I have here is actually a basic clicker game. So I'll go ahead and play it and show you it in like the works pretty much. So you know what you're trying to make. You don't have to recreate the UI or anything, right? You don't have to recreate everything thing for thing. You could just even do like your own twist, but you see I click it, there's like a little click animation and like a little hover effect when I click it, and then I gain clicks up here, and you can see I can actually click on this, and this will open a store where I can buy, per se, more click power, or I could hire an assistant. Uh, you see I click it, and then it like has a little animation where it goes over to here to show my stats, and I'll even switch over to server real quick to give myself some uh, money. Hold on. Leader stats, clicks. So I'm just giving myself some money for uh, testing purposes. So now I can give me myself, a, I can hire an assistant, which will 
automatically give me money over time. You see it kind of shows on the screen. Every few seconds it gives me some money. That's kind of the basic idea. And you can even add more things to this. Uh, I'll show you my uh, version that I've been working on. I don't know if this is the most updated version or not, but uh, I'll show you it anyways. Uh, let me close these. And it doesn't matter too much, but you see I click it and it even has like a little effect for uh, like money and things like that. And I got a whole bunch of different things and you can see now it even has like the description, different icons. And I can also build coffee factory which will like boost my workers. So I'll show you what it looks like with coffee. You see it has like a little screen effect too. Alright, and you can also see over here, like, there's coffee, so it shows me my production, like, how much coffee per second. I'm not expecting you to script a game like this, I'm just expecting you to make, like, a simpler version, but this is just an example of what it could be. I remember I got kind of caught up in uh, messing around trying to make this, because this is really fun. I really enjoy making clicker games like this, because uh, it teaches you a lot with uh, handling data and stuff like that which is something that I personally really enjoy doing and it's actually something I started out doing I remember like I used to make clicker games uh, not on Roblox though on scratch that's like how I first started like game development really even is making clicker games on scratch and it taught me a lot about uh, logical thinking and doing things logically and how you would like approach different things and put things together essentially through code Scratch is a really useful tool like that, right? So, another really good thing. Uh, obviously, the last two have been GUI, so I'm going to actually show you uh, something else that's not GUI related. So, this is more of maybe like a simulator type of thing. Uh, I didn't clear my stats, but it's okay. Uh, I don't need to clear them anyways. So, uh, what you see is I got these coins, they have like this really cool like satisfying effect. You obviously don't have to do it, but like they bounce up and down and rotate and stuff. And once you get it, or collect them, you can see like it shows it on your screen like boom, money, 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 you know, money, money. And over here are two different shops, so you go here and you can buy uh, a dumbbell. So first off you start with like this normal dumbbell, and once you click it you see you get some strength. And then you got this more improved dumbbell, which is bigger and gives you five strength per click, right? And it increases your leader stats, whatever. And then uh, with that strength, uh, you can buy powers to like fight people with is basically the idea. So uh, I'll show you the different powers. Let me buy a uh, golden dumbbell. All right, so we also got wind kick. So, uh, these are just like different powers that you can use to fight people. And I also had the idea of making it so like every few minutes there'd be like a tournament where you could join a tournament and fight people for like a cost of money. And then whoever wins, the, uh, they get the money pretty much. Like the prize pool from everybody who entered. Which would be really cool and like a way of giving more money and things like that. But you can see... Uh, I got like this animation that plays when I activate it and it like fires off a beam and it looks kind of complicated but in reality all it is is it's just tweening and C frame so you're just tweening stuff you're just tweening its C frame its size uh, its transparency things like that to make it kind of look cool and then you just time it with the animation and then we also got the tempest kick which is a little bit less uh, satisfying but uh obviously it's a lower level skill so like it doesn't do as much right but uh you see that my damage actually scales with my uh strength so the more strength i have the more damage i do you see boom it did a lot of damage there and every time it hits a player it has like a little explosion effect too which is pretty cool but uh you can see it scales differently, like each one will uh, scale differently based on strength. And if you're fighting other players, then it'll scale with their health. So the damage will also be based off of their strength. And if they have a lot of strength, it may not do as much damage to somebody who would be weaker, right? That's the kind of idea behind the game. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's not too complicated either, really. It's just... Uh, 
a lot of touched events really uh, some leader stats a uh, few remotes you know nothing like crazy it's all pretty simple uh, the hardest part is VFX really which is just something that you gotta kind of get into the hang of if you're good with C frames and using tweens and things like that uh, VFX becomes really easy uh, I'm also going to leave the download link for this game and like the other simple clicker game uh, I'm gonna let link it in the description below for a website called uh, Toolblocks, I think right and that's like a website where you can upload assets and things. Uh, I'm gonna upload them for free so you can download them for free. If you could, you could just uh, leave like a like or some positive feedback on them if you want. I'm gonna comment, or I already have commented every single line of code <laughs> in all my scripts pretty much. So you can download the game and read over my scripts and like break it into pieces to see how I did certain things to figure it out. And I also have comments kind of explaining what each line does. So. That's also a really good way to learn, it's just uh, taking things and breaking it down and seeing how other people do stuff so you can uh, recreate it or use the same process of thinking that they used in your own game or something like that, right? Which is very useful. Uh, I don't know if you can hear this, no you can't, but I also have sound effects that play when you pick up a coin which I thought was pretty cool. You can't hear it now, but you'll probably hear it when, if you want to test it or whatever. Uh, what else did I want to go over? I think I have time, so I'm gonna go over my other admin panel I've made. Uh, this is my admin panel. So this uses a module script. This actually uses, like, a ton of module scripts, but this is just my admin panel. This is, like, a professional admin panel that has a lot of stuff. You can see I did some fancy commenting here. Uh, and this is its config file. So a good thing with, uh, Module scripts is you can use them to make config files, which can be easily modified by somebody who maybe buys the product. That's another thing that I forgot to mention about the admin panel is it's actually something that you can sell to people and make profit off of. If that's what you want to do, you can just make a simple admin panel. So for maybe 500 or 1000 Robux, depending on, you know, if you want to or not. And that'll make some basic Robux, some simple Robux. And if you learn how to use module scripts like this, you can give it a simple config file to config configure things like uh, permissions to see who's admin and who isn't. So uh, I'm just going to go over this to show you like what the capabilities of a uh, admin system could be. So this one actually uses discord logging so you have the option of logging uh, moderators actions in your discord so if they ban somebody it will uh, send a message in a discord channel saying that they banned somebody is it also has cross server banning and kicking so you don't have to be in the same server as the other player in order to ban them or kick them and it also has chat commands that you can use to get a server id and join a player so you can get a player's server id and then join their server with that server id and then there's also a permission level so you can uh admins will have different permission levels so different commands will require you to have different permission level kind of like you only a moderator can do certain things only an admin can do certain things kind of thing uh, this one also has a server-side executor which I haven't really finished yet but it's pretty much almost done uh, I was gonna do cross account banning but I decided not to because I didn't feel like it but you can also edit a player's leader stats and team my other panel did that had that option and uh, you can see it has a bunch of configuration here. So what we got is uh, you can configure the key to open it, the chat prefix, uh, you can configure the icon, the Discord webhook, or whether or not you want to log. You can use a group rank if you want. Uh, you can set moderators in this table. You can just set uh, different command permission levels. You can enable different commands, obviously. so. Uh, Module scripts give you a lot of things that you can do to make it easier for your user or your client that's using the file or the product kind of thing. The way module scripts work if you want like a really simple rundown is you can think of every script in Lua as a function actually and that's actually what it is. Is Every script in Lua is a function that contains uh, code inside of it and pretty much Roblox is just running those functions. 
but module scripts are the same thing except uh, you can uh, run the scripts whenever you want to so you can use require on the script to call the script and the thing about module scripts is they usually well they actually have to return something just like a function right so this script is actually returning config which is just a table that stores all of our uh, information for configuration and then it can access that config and pretty much do whatever it needs to with the table which is very useful you can also return things like functions or you can return tables that have functions inside of them for uh, global functions that you can easily use across scripts and another thing is if you edit say uh, a table inside of a module script like this like if we were to edit the config it will actually change across scripts so if another script requires uh, this script after we change something inside of the config table it will see that that was changed but it'll only work on the server or the client so if a local script changes a uh, thing then only other local scripts can see it it won't replicate between server and client which is kind of annoying but that's just how it is so uh in the well, there is a reason for that, but it's a little, <laughs> I'm not explaining that, but that's pretty much it for this video. Sorry, I haven't uploaded in a while, but uh, expect me to upload a little bit more uh, re uh, often. Also, if you want to make a game or if you make any of the projects below and you want me to maybe like review them in a video, uh, maybe give you advice on how to do things better or just look over your code and maybe insult you and bully you or something like that. Maybe you're into that, I don't know. But uh, if you wanna do that, uh, I have a Discord server. I'm gonna link it in the description. You can join that and send me the file and I might review it for a video. I'm not gonna do all of them, obviously, but I might do a few, make a few videos on it. I also have plans for some other upcoming videos which might be a little bit similar to something like that. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm also gonna start working on an advanced series to go over th some more advanced concepts, which will be fun. So. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.